everyone, shalom, ciao, namaste. I am Ilana, aka Elmire Superstar, and like, welcome to my channel. This is totally PCP, Pop Culture Psychology, Film Analysis Edition, yeah. I have been told for years that I am pretty much the epitome of a valley girl. I was born in Tarzana for the first six years of my life. I grew up in Canoga Park, Winnetka. My mom is always making fun of my valley girl voice. So yeah, I guess I am a valley girl. And that is what today's video is about, the 1983 cult classic Valley Girl. And it goes to show that 37 years after this film released, that peer pressure is still unfortunately in style and girls in high school are still mean little b thought that this movie was kind of like lost in time as it ranks lower on the scale of 80s classics in comparison to Pretty in Pink and The Breakfast Club and Fast Times at Ridgemont High, but it turns out to be a favorite of such high profile directors like Kevin Smith and Quentin Tarantino. I remember the first time I saw this movie, my mom got me the DVD to occupy me because we were staying at my grandma's during the 2005 fires and there was really nothing to do. And I remember it was the poster that stood out. I just thought it was so cool and chic and fun fact. The girl in the poster is not even the girl in the movie. <laughs> They're two completely different people. Deborah Foreman, who plays Julie, the female lead, was very natural. And this movie also goes to show the actor that Nicolas Cage is today. Good, but with a bit of a tendency to overact. The movie has the fashion and lingos of the 80s down to a perfectly crossed T. And it definitely sets the stage for those born after this time frame that still have such a strong connection and desire to be in this era. It's a typical opposites attract love story. There's no surprise there, but in fact, the the remake of Valley Girl was released sometime this year on Amazon Prime and I haven't seen it because I, I just I can't do remakes that's just me <laughs> but I've heard that it was pretty good and that the end does have a twist from the original luckily the plot stays pretty close to the original but let's get into that original storyline Julie does have a couple of the archetypes that we're used to seeing with these kinds of movies she's blonde she's pretty she's popular and her friends are super envious that she has this seemingly perfect relationship with with this hunky guy named Tommy. And she acknowledges this, but she also feels that their relationship is getting stale because he's not very intellectually stimulating and she's starting to feel like an old chair in their relationship. She even dumps him and rebuffs his claims that she will come back. And I feel it's kind of rare to see these strong will declarations, especially in teenage movies when, just like real life, there is so much pressure to obtain and maintain a relationship in high school. Then Julie meets Randy, like, oh my God, totally tubular. And and it's a division of the Valley and Hollywood. And this is a similar dynamic to the Jets and the Sharks in West Side Story. Randy even justifies that they both do the same things, it's just how they do them that sets apart the Hollywood dudes from the Val babes and that people in the Valley tend to put up a facade. It shouldn't matter where he was from because overall, Randy seemed like a pretty good guy, especially in comparison to Tommy, who was a major asshole. As I mentioned earlier, Quentin Tarantino happens to be a big fan of Valley Girl, and it's ironic considering that Michael Bowen, the actor that plays Tommy, would later go on to play this douchebag right here. My name is Bucks, and I'm here to f I mean, first Tommy was trying to get Julie back, then he was trying to make her jealous by chatting up other girls in front of her, and then he manipulated her best friend Lauren into hooking up with them. Honestly, Tommy is just such a total tool. Julie and Randy's relationship is pretty great, and she didn't even start second-guessing things until her friends started bitching about it, so let's get into their characters. Stacy is just a total whiny blocking brat and even though she acknowledges Randy at the beach and says what a hunk he is she really tries to sway Julie from getting involved with him at all but yet it was okay for her to hook up with Randy's best friend Fred. Double standard match? Lauren was played by Elizabeth E.G. Daly who millennials will know as the voice of Tommy Pickles in Rugrats. Lauren is seen as the easy slutty girl and this is foreshadowed pretty early on by Julie and Stacy saying that they're not entirely sure if she has done everything that she has said she's done but that she will get herself into a lot of trouble and as her friends they need to protect her and this eventually comes true with her hooking up with Tommy and we do see that Lauren is not entirely comfortable with this role that she has forced herself into. To be fair out of the group of friends Lauren is the only one not to chastise or pressure Julie into breaking up with Randy for Tommy. She's kind of indecisive on what Julie herself should do. Lastly we have Susie who had a very interesting side story. It kind of evolved into a Mrs. Robinson thing between her stepmother and the guys she liked who was kind of just tolerant of her and really didn't notice her until he saw her naked in the shower because that's pretty true to life. <laughs> 
Man, teenage boys are such horn dogs. Julie's friends were more concerned with how dating Randy was going to affect her status and her popularity over her happiness. And this definitely reminds me of in Say Anything when Diane dumps Lloyd because of how it would look upon her to date him when they are such opposites. It's because of this that Julie was reluctant the entire time and it is also the reason why she eventually breaks up with Randy to get back together with Tommy and keep her friends. She states how everybody was counting on her to do the right thing. That right thing being breaking up with Randy and I just think that, that is such a crock of <laughs> Melodramatic teenage <laughs> The right thing is standing up for those that have been wronged. The right thing is standing up for yourself. The right thing is not sabotaging your happiness to appease those around you and maintain your status of popularity. Julie really lost sight of herself because of her friend's expectations. They even set it into motion for her to get back together with Tommy and she makes this decision without even telling Randy, which is super messed up. She tells Randy that he has no control over her life when clearly her friends did have that control. Randy calls her out on this and tells her that it should be between the two of them and not the rest of the world and he's right. This is also one of those moments where we see that teenage wisdom, but luckily there is some adult wisdom as well, which Julie definitely needs. Julie's parents are both free-willed hippies that marched on Washington and grew up in the summer of love and went to Woodstock. And that's definitely where she inherited being so grounded in her values that we saw at the beginning of the movie because her parents allowed her that independence to develop into her own person. When Julie starts questioning things, it's her father that tells her that superficiality and material things don't matter, that it's somebody's values and who they are at heart that make them an ideal match or a good person. He encourages her to continue being her own person and not conform to the ideologies of her friends because there are people out there that want everyone else to be carbon copies of themselves rather than standing on their own two feet. And it actually reminds me of a quote that I read earlier today from Denzel Washington that says, some people will never like you because your spirit irritates their demons. High school is such a discombobulating time and unfortunately fitting in is one of the key elements of survival. Not everybody is lucky to achieve that though. We're Courage to be open and accept those that are different and be tolerant and accepting. At least in my experience, that doesn't always happen. Typically, it's only when someone has an agenda. And people don't always like people that are different or that are unique or that are weird. And that really sucks because we shouldn't have to always put up a facade. We should be able to show who we really are. And I think that that's why I was not very well liked in high school because <laughs> No one was gonna tell me what to do and I was my own person. I was myself, what you see is what you get and people thought that I was weird and that's the reason why they threw food at me and cut my hair and called me names and cyberbullied me. <laughs> yeah, it was a really tough time and unfortunately some of the people that I went to high school with are still as nasty as they were back then but my wish is that they hopefully gain enough sense and wisdom to break the cycle when raising their own children. To anybody that's watching this that's in high school now, don't pretend to be somebody you're not just to get others to like you. Be yourself and do what makes you happy because just remember, it's fun being weird, you should try it sometime. I think you all should check out Valley Girl for yourselves and the original and the remake are both available to stream on Amazon Prime. That is going to be it for today's segment. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you in the next wave of Martians. Bye.